In this video, we will examine the limit of sine of theta divided by theta as theta goes to zero. This is a limit that is useful in evaluating the limits of other functions, as well as evaluating the derivative of the sine function. Let's look at more closely at the limit of sine of theta divided by theta as theta goes to zero. Recalling the definition of limit, we want to know what happens to sine of theta divided by theta when theta is close to zero. So if we think about values of theta close to zero, that means the sine of theta is going to be close to the sine of zero, which we know is zero. So therefore, when I look at sine of theta divided by theta, for theta close to zero, I'm going to get something that looks like zero divided by zero, which means we must do more work. If we take a look at this limit numerically, we can see that the limit is equal to one. Noting that theta is always measured in radians, if we choose values of theta that are close to zero and both to the left and to the right of zero, we see that as theta approaches zero, sine of theta divided by theta gets close to one. We also see this graphically when theta is close to zero so just to the left or just to the right of the y-axis, the y-values on the graph of y equals sine of theta divided by theta are close to one. I'm going to refer you to the textbook for an analytical argument as to why the limit of sine of theta over theta as theta goes to zero is equal to one. And instead, we're gonna take a look at how we use this limit as a template to evaluate the limit of other functions. When we consider using this limit as a template, we note that those three places, all the thetas are the same. So I've got the sine of theta divided by theta as theta goes to zero. So anytime we need to use this limit or use this template, those three thetas have to be the same. So I can replace that theta with anything and the limit's still one. So in this case, the limit of sine of w over w as w goes to zero has to be one. Let's consider another example. The sine of five x divided by five x as x goes to zero. Uh, but the three pieces are not matching. But as x goes to zero, it makes sense that five x also goes to zero. So therefore, I can say the limit of sine of 5x divided by 5x as 5x goes to zero, which match, matches the template, is equal to one. Let's look at the limit of the sine of 9h minus one divided by 9h minus one as h goes to one ninth. Again, it doesn't appear that those three pieces are equal. But I could make a substitution. I'm gonna make a substitution and let theta equal 9h minus one. Now in this case, when h is approaching 1 ninth, theta is approaching zero. So I can rewrite this limit, the sine of 9h minus one divided by 9h, min 9h minus one as h goes to 1 ninth, as the limit of sine of theta divided by theta as theta goes to zero, which I know equals one. Let's look at another example. Let's consider the limit of the sine of four x over three x as x goes to zero. Sometimes you see students write that this limit of sine of four x over three x as x goes to zero is the same thing as the limit of four times the sine of x divided by three x as x goes to zero. This is not acceptable because it makes it appear that the sine of four x is the same as four times the sine of x, and we know that that is not true. The sine of four x is not equal to four times the sine of x. So let's consider a better approach to finding the limit of sine of four x divided by three x as x goes to zero. First, we're going to make use of a very useful and strategic tool. Namely, we're gonna multiply sine of four x divided by three x by a form of one. In this case, we're gonna multiply by four x divided by four x. Why, why would we do this? Because I'm looking 
for that template of sine of 4x divided by 4x. So let's put one in. But I can't change the value of it, so I want to make sure I multiply by 1. Now I can use the commutative property of multiplication to interchange the locations of 4x and 3x in the denominators. Next I can simplify a bit, and now I have the limit as x goes to 0 of the sine of 4x divided by 4x times 4 thirds. I can use the limit laws, namely the product rule portion of the limit laws, to say that this equals the product of the limits of the two pieces. So I'm going to say that this equals the limit of sine of 4x divided by 4x as x goes to 0 times the limit of 4 thirds as x goes to 0. Knowing that as x goes to 0, 4x also goes to 0, that first part reflects the template, which I know that that limit is equal to 1. The limit of 4 thirds as x goes to 0 is 4 thirds. So the limit of the sine of 4x divided by 3x as x goes to 0 is 4 thirds. Again, this template shows that the sine of anything divided by anything as that anything goes to 0 is equal to 1, including smiley faces. Let's consider one additional example in which how the template might be used is not as obvious. Let's consider the limit of 1 minus the cosine of z squared divided by z squared as z goes to 0. Again, looking at the definition of limit, I want to consider what happens to that expression as z approaches 0. So I'm going to think about if z is close to 0, z squared is also close to 0 squared, which is 0. So the cosine of z squared is approximately the cosine of 0, which is 1. So filling in those pieces, thinking of values that are close to 0, the limit of 1 minus cosine of z squared over z squared as z is close to 0 is approximately 0 divided by 0. Uh, we must do more work. We can look at this limit numerically. So for values of z that are close to 0, some which are less than 0 and close to 0, some which are greater than 0 and close to 0, and we see that when z is close to 0, 1 minus the cosine of z squared divided by z squared is also close to 0. We also see this graphically. When z is close to 0, the graph of the function shows that the values, the y values, are also close to 0. Now let's take a look at an analytical approach. Again, I'm going to make use of multiplying by a form of 1. This time, the form of 1 that I use when multiplying by 1 minus cosine of z squared divided by z squared takes the form of 1 plus cosine of z squared divided by 1 plus cosine of z squared. The reason I do that is in the numerator, when I multiply those two factors, I get the difference of squares, 1 minus cosine squared of z squared. And I see when I have in the numerator 1 minus cosine squared of z squared that I get sine squared of z squared because I'm making use of the Pythagorean identity the sine squared of z squared plus cosine squared of z squared equals 1. Now in that numerator the sine squared of z squared I'm going to break up as the sine of z squared times the sine of z squared so that I get the limit as z approaches 0 of sine of z squared divided by z squared times the sine of z squared divided by 1 plus cosine of z squared. Now I can use the product rule portion of the limit laws again to break up that limit to be the product of the two limits. So I've got the limit of sine z squared divided by z squared as z approaches 0 times the limit of sine of z squared divided by 1 plus cosine of z squared as z approaches 0. Again, z approaches 0 means that z squared also approaches 0. So I see that that template has arisen. So that overall my limit is equal to 1 times the limit of sine of z squared divided by 1 plus cosine of z squared as z approaches 0. Again, I can think of what is the output as z is very close to 0. And I'm going to get the sine of 0 squared divided by 1 plus cosine of 0 squared, which is simply going to give us 0. 
So we've just shown analytically that the limit as z approaches zero of one minus cosine of z squared divided by z squared is equal to zero. So in this video, we've shown multiple uses of the limit of sine of theta divided by theta as theta goes to zero.